Good morning, folks. Jimmy here, your local real estate professional. And while waking up and preparing for my day to day, I came across this amazing question. Can you sell a house with structural issues? We're going to answer that one right now. Let me jump right into it. Now, the good news is this. Yes. Boom. Knew it. You absolutely can sell a house with structural issues. Now, that said, there's a lot more meat behind that. So let me jump into that as well. Again, the short answer is yes, you can sell a house with structural issues, but you got to understand a few things before you do. First and foremost, let's talk about this. If you know a house has a structural issues, you absolutely need to make sure you disclose that, period. I'm going to repeat that. You need to disclose that, whether you are an individual a uh, for sale by owner person, or if you are using the services of real estate brokerage, you need to make sure you disclose that you know that there is a structural issue with any property that you are attempting to sell. I promise, don't worry. <laughs> Not just structural issues, but any major issues. You need to be honest and tell people about that, okay? I'm trying to save you money and I'm trying to save you future litigation because it comes out that you don't disclose these things you will be hearing from your attorney or somebody's attorney in the near future. <laughs> Big mistake. Now, there's a saying that says all real estate will sell if it's priced properly. Now, that is something and a lesson that I learned from my first broker, Mr. Lois Kirkland, over at Real Estate One years and years and years ago. And you know what? It's been 30 years and she's right. All properties will sell if they're priced correctly. You know, I've waited years to hear somebody say that. <laughs> now, the problem is going to come when you try to figure out, OK, well, what's the right price? Well, here's some things to consider, right? First off, when you're trying to sell a house with a major issue like this, a structural issue, I'm not, and when I say major issue, I mean major issue. I'm not talking about like the paint color needs to be changed. It's, it's now blue and maybe it should be beige. I'm not talking about that type of stuff. I'm talking about major items. When you're dealing with major items like that, you're dealing with one, the actual cost of the repair, and two, and this is probably what's gonna cost you the most, the stigma associated with that repair. So in this particular case, a foundation issue is a big issue. It is a big issue, right? Either, unless you're a contractor and you know uh, that those things can be resolved with the right expertise relatively easily, or, well, yeah, even unless you're that person, however you get that experience, it's a big issue. And not only are you thinking money, you're thinking time, you're thinking all this other stuff that goes along with it, right? And all of those things that increase your fear about purchasing this property, ultimately, if fear goes up, price goes down. Think about that. If fear goes up, price goes down. If you're telling people up front that the home has a structural issue, I just told you what, what they're thinking, right? They're thinking that this is going to cost a massive amount of money. Something's going to go wrong. And my dream house is going to fall apart on me. Not too many people are willing to rush into that situation. All right. So stigma, that's going to be your biggest issue. Second is cost. Now, cost is two things, right? Cost is not only the cost of the repair uh, from a man hour standpoint, but it's also the cost of materials. Now, since we're making this video in December 2020, uh, 2022. So one of the cool things, though, material costs are actually starting to creep back down. As you can remember, back during the pandemic, Price, because we couldn't get anything, material costs were massive. They were huge. They were escalating, whatever. But here's, while material costs are coming down, here's the real issue you're dealing with now. Now, the issue is labor. Specifically, if I buy this problem from you, who am I gonna get to fix the freaking house? That's the question. And that is a bigger question than you may have ordinarily think. Because pre-pandemic, anybody with a high school diploma and an interest in fixing stuff or that they were good in their hands had a job. You can find those type of people everywhere, everywhere. They were literally everywhere. It was, I mean, everybody had at least three or four handyman type people that they can get in contact with. There were professional contractors willing to do the work. Well, since the great resignation, 
you remember that that's basically when everybody decided to quit whatever they were doing and, and start pursuing some things that they actually wanted to do that they felt more beneficial about that they felt they'd get more beneficial effect about you'll remember that when they did that one of the first and hardest hit groups that saw this were contractors property investors specifically real estate investors really don't know how to value property they don't they don't they don't they just simply do not know how to value property the way banks do. Hey folks, how you guys doing today? Jimmy Roberts here. And after 30 years in the real estate business, over 20 years of that being in the appraisal business, the one thing that I know is for sure, the five biggest mistakes that real estate investors make that keep them from making big, big, big profits on their flips and in their investments in general. And I'm making that available to you. All you have to do is click the link below and there you go. This is Jimmy Roberts. Get the five biggest mistakes that real estate investors make and you can get it below. See you. People that do stuff like fixing foundations. See, fixing foundations and other construction related work is hard. It ain't easy. It's hard work. You gotta dig up the basement. You gotta knock out the concrete block. You gotta, you know, easily pull the block out, you scarring your hands, you getting your knees dirty. It's just, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of back-breaking work. And let's be honest, most people don't want to do that, especially now. <laughs> they really don't want to do that. So you have a labor shortage. And when you have a labor shortage, just like the housing shortage, right? What happens? The people who are still in the business are going to charge a lot more than they used to. Right? They just are. But here's the other part, and this is the part that's probably really gonna get you. Those people, because you're a one-off job, they're probably not gonna wanna deal with you, which means that you are gonna need to focus on finding people who are who have the capacity to do the work to get it done, which means that you're not gonna be able to deal with the big company, or if you do, you're gonna pay the big company price. And we all, we just talked about that. That's gonna be massive. However, if you're dealing with a smaller company or a smaller uh, handy person, man person or somebody with just the ability to get the job done without all of the marketing and whatnot, if you're dealing with that person, they have much higher costs also. Because again, if they're paying somebody, they gotta pay for an increased price. And again, they wanna take advantage of the fact that they are a limited client. So, the costs are going to be significantly high if you can get it done in a timely fashion because they are already working. So you're going to have to find somebody to do it and it's going to be on their timeline. So you're asking somebody when you're trying to sell a house you're just, with this type of issue, you're asking somebody to basically buy the house and wait for month, possibly months before somebody even comes out to start the fix, right? That's a big ask. And if somebody's willing to do that, somebody's gonna have to pay for that. Who is gonna pay for that? Hmm, let me think, let me think. You. Clearly that's me. You're gonna need to pay for that in the form of either a discount or even paying a portion of the repair itself, all right? Here's the third thing. The third thing you gotta consider, your pool of buyers is drastically reduced when you come out and say, hey, look, I got a structural issue on this house. Why? Because FHA buyers are not going to purchase your property because they can't. They're coming into the house with a three and a half percent of whatever the purchase price is. They're not com they're coming into the house with three and a half percent because they don't have 20 percent, meaning they don't have money to make repairs, major repairs like this. They don't have it. So they're gone. Two, VA. Similar, although a lot of VA buyers do have money, but again, why should they uh, purchase your home where they know they got to walk in the door and drop a ton of cash when they can purchase your, your home, your, the home next door? It just doesn't make sense, right? Three, conventional mortgages. Most conventional mortgages, are gonna, they're not going to lend on this type of property. There are some products out there, but again, your buyer is going to have to jump through a lot of different loops to make sure that this happens. And even during that, you are probably going to be asked to come to the table and pay for a portion or all of the repair. So again, in the, in the form of escrow. So again, 
you know, your pool of buyers is drastically limited. So where does that leave you? I told you, you can buy it. Somebody will buy the property, but where does that leave you? Well, it leads you to cash buyers. The only people that are going to be able to buy this property outright are cash buyers. Now there's some benefits with dealing with cash buyers. Cash buyers generally are one, either uh, people with tons of money from something else that they did. I don't know, uh, or investors. Okay. Those two are the categories of people that you're going to be dealing with. Now, the good news is this, a cash buyer can get this thing closed within three weeks. Okay. That means from contract to close is about three weeks. If you're dealing with the correct title company and they actually have the money and the capability of closing, assuming that's the case, that means that from soup to nuts, you can have your property sold in as little as three weeks, hands, hands clear and you're off doing whatever you're doing. You're sleeping well at night because now you don't have two more each things, right? You can do that, but here's what it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you dearly. They're not cheap these days. Here's what I mean by that. If you're an investor or a cash buyer, you are looking for a steep, steep discount. Why? Because if I'm a cash buyer, and I'm coming in to buy your problem because that's what it is. I expect to be paid for it. Plain and simple. Now, again, seems like you're already gone. <laughs> you're already moved into your other house. This property is more of a burden as opposed to a home. If that's the case, whack it, sell it to a cash buyer and get on with your life. So there you have it. Yes, you can absolutely can sell a house with structural issues or any other major issues for that matter, but chances are you'll be selling it to an investor and or cash buyer. So there you have it. I'm Jimmy, your local real estate professional and pocket appraiser. Catch you later.